Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I'm gonna be trying something new. Uh, I've been getting requests for this more and more often lately, and I don't really know if anyone's gonna really watch it, but I've been getting requests to do a Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV. I guess maybe in response to the fact that I did one for Final Fantasy XI. And, uh, to be honest, I know that they're out there for Final Fantasy XIV, but I, I don't really get it entirely. You know, it's... I, I don't know. It's just something I'm not really familiar with the idea of. So I'm going to give it a shot. And I figure it's also good because I can play from kind of like a new player's perspective. Obviously, I'm going to have some differences between me and a brand new player. Like the 20 messages in my del my delivery Moogle right now. But um, I don't know. I think maybe it'll be something that uh, I can help give some decent advice to, to newer players. Something I haven't really done in a long time. You know, it's kind of just like, oh, you know, do your quest, do this, follow your main story, whatever. The generic advice. And I might be able to give more uh, first-hand advice since I'll be leveling a brand new character myself. This is a character I just made on Gilgamesh. And I'm looking forward to giving it a try. I'm going to skip most of the cutscenes here just because... Uh, <laughs> it's Otherwise, this video would take forever if I tried watching every single cutscene. So, expect a lot of skipping to be going on. So, uh, I'm leveling a healer because I don't want my uh, dungeon cues to be complete crap. And uh, I'm just starting a new character here in Gridani. I'm also playing with a gamepad, which is something I'm very, very, very unfamiliar with. A DualShock 4, actually, although the touchpad doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if I need drivers or something for it, but whatever. So, uh, if you're not somebody who's looking for new player advice, or, you know, if that's just not your thing, that's basically what I'm going to be doing this entire video, is new player advice. So, if that's not your thing, you know, I wouldn't recommend watching this, unless you just want to hear me spout nonsense and, uh, and see how I handle being a player with no cross-class abilities, no free company, no nothing, and, uh, see how it just ends up uh, being a pain for me, and I can feel all the new player pain as well. So, getting started... Uh, no matter which city you're in, you're going to get a basic quest right here, which will allow you to, which will ask you to do a few things. It'll ask you to visit your, your class's guild, whatever class you decided to start the game as, and you'll be able to pick up some quests while you're there. Now, um, while you're doing this first quest, which is also going to ask you to do this, which is attuning to an Aetherite, which uh, you could teleport to these all over the world, and uh, as much money as it wastes, it is a great convenience that you will definitely make use of way later in the game. And then it'll also ask you to go check out the market board so it can give you a short tutorial on how the auction house of this game works. But one thing that's going to happen is you're going to go through the main city and you're going to see a lot of quests like this. Now, I guess I wouldn't really say that you shouldn't do these quests, but I am not a huge fan of these quests. You're going to see me picking up a handful of them here, but I'd say you really, as a new player, kind of got to look and see what these new quests are actually offering in terms of rewards like this one's offering me 50 experience points that's less than the amount i'll get from killing a single enemy however all it does is require me to run over here and it just so happens that i need to get my ethernet shard running over here anyway so as long as it lines up with where i'm going and what i'm doing then uh it works out for me if i don't like a quest then i'll just simply uh i'll just simply not do it or else i'll just uh, simply abandon it now, the thing I just touched over there is called an Aethernet Shard, which allows you to teleport to other Aethernet Shards within the city. Every time you see an Aethernet Shard, you'll pretty much want to go get it. Now, see, this is a reward that is going to be worth it because it gives me level 5 gear. Now, it just so happens that a headpiece is not the most useful of things for me. But if you're a brand new player without the Collector's Edition, something like this, killing 6 Forest Fungars, is very much going to be worth your time. So that's the big thing for me is I'm looking at these rewards and what's going to help me get through the earlier quests. Now, I know what the earlier quests entail. I know there's a quest that's going to ask you to have full level 5 equipment. New player wouldn't know that. So as a new player, picking up as many of these quests as possible. Now, let me show you how the Aethernet shard works. I have this shard, but the only other place I can go is the Gridanian Aether Aetherite Plaza, which was the first big Aetherite that I attuned to. As you unlock more Aethernet shards, you'll be able to teleport around the city. And those are free, but you can only do them within the city. Now again, quests right over here. We'll see what this gives. And if it doesn't give something that I need or want... Oh, Grade 1 Dark Matter. It's actually not that bad of a quest. Grade 1 Dark Matter is really good if you're going to be getting into uh, crafts very early on. Because it allows you to repair your gear. Now that's, again, that's not something that you'll probably do much of at the low levels. But like I said, it's worth taking a look at all of these individual quests, even though most of them are going to be not the greatest. Like this, you could probably get to level 2, 3, 4, maybe something along those lines just off of 
these first few quests in the city. Now this first one asks you to slash bow. It actually wants you to do the emote slash bow. And you're going to see quite a few quests that ask you to do emotes like this. I believe this quest was supposed to be almost like a tutorial on emotes or something along those lines. Yeah, and now I have to do slash joy to the same guy. Yeah, it's pretty much just getting you used to using the different emotes. And if you don't know to type them out, then there is a menu that will allow you to, uh, to pull them up individually. You're odd. Hey, don't make fun of me. But this quest is worth 100 gil. And you know what? Gil early in the game is very valuable. Dance. It's very, very valuable. This dance is one of the worst looking dances I've ever seen in a game, by the way. So go ahead and think it's the worst dance you've ever seen. Because odds are, it is the, it is the worst dance you've ever seen. If you, went, if you went to a club and did the Rogan dance, they would actually... Even if you could be like Leonardo DiCaprio and they would probably kick you out because you look like such a fool. I'm not even kidding. It's, it's really that bad. So like I said, I'm playing with a gamepad here, and that's something that I'm very, very unfamiliar with. I just, I, I don't know. It's just not something that I've, I've ever done before, really. I've, I've dabbled in it. I've used it for maybe, like, crafting a few times or gathering, but never to actually, like, go out in the world and fight. So this is really going to be kind of a learning experience for me as much as it's hopefully going to be a learning experience for anyone who's looking to get into the game who's brand new and just kind of looking for some advice here and there. And I have some other plans for things that I'm going to do in this series. Uh, I've made videos for some of those things in the past, like uh, upgrading your HUD is a big one. The, but I feel like if I put it through a Let's Play, it'll probably be a lot easier. Now again, rewards here are really good. Again, level 5 items, level 5 equipment. The only quest that I have seen that was not really worth it that much was the very first quest that I picked up. But all of these quests will make your life easier doing them on your first class. On subsequent classes, it probably won't give you any trouble at all to, like... You probably won't even have these quests available unless you have them available in the other cities. But really on my second and third class, that's when I find myself really skipping all of these quests. But do not skip quests in the lower levels. Really try to avoid it because... There's a few things that are probably going to happen to you leveling up on your first character. And one of them you're going to see right now. When you're talking to an NPC, as fun as it is to just spam confirm going to the next step, be careful that they don't start you on no. Uh, <laughs> I know there's quite a few quests that give you a choice in the early game uh, that, you know, yes or no. And if you press no, it basically cancels all of the cutscene that you just went through, which would have happened right there. Yeah, you really want to avoid that from happening because that can get annoying if it happens over and over again. Also, since you don't have a mount early game, and also just because you're in the city and you can't use mounts, Sprint is your best friend. Sprint basically uses all of your TP or technique points and allows you to run faster or sprint for a short period of time. And I highly, highly recommend that you use it as often as possible when you're in a city. Uh, eventually, as a bard, you'll get an ability that lets you run faster as well as all of your teammates. But really, Sprint is going to be your best friend on top of teleporting around. But once you have a mount, that changes a little bit. Now, do you have anything you Now, see, that's a quest that I don't find useful. 50 experience points again, which is a terrible, terrible amount. And it gives me some shards, which you can use for crafting, or you can even sell them. But I personally, just it's just not a quest that interests me. I already know what that quest actually is made out of. And I just have no interest in it. Now, this quest gives 110 EXP, and it gives some wind shards and a few things. And this all just requires that I go around and... I gather the vegetable offerings off the ground. Something really simple, basic fetch quest. You're going to be running into a lot of these playing Final Fantasy XIV. And, uh, but I saw what the rewards were. 110 EXP, which will put me at level 2. 110 gil, which you can definitely use. It's a, it's very useful at the early game. 110 gil is laughable at the end game. You would never do something for 110 gil. But if you're brand, since you're brand new to the game, it, uh, it's something that you definitely want to look into. Now, you might be noticing, if you're somebody who's not playing the game, that there's like a bunch of what looks like celebrations going on there is the new year's event uh going on right now so that's why it looks extra festive so yep there we go hit level two and just so happens i'm by my delivery moogle now if you bought the collector's edition for this game stopping at the delivery moogle before you go out and fight stuff will probably be one of the best decisions you'll make now i really don't want to pick up all these items just because i've got there's there's more items than the 20 here because I know I have more than 20 items. There's like, this guy says that many? No, there's definitely more. See, I don't understand. I keep, I pressed, the. I could have swore I was deleting these, but I guess I wasn't. Delete. 
Yeah, you see that? It's not deleting it after. I guess it needs to take a second after I take the item out before it can delete it. Maybe I was just doing it too fast. Retrieving letter. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird that it's doing that, that it's like not actually deleting them. And sometimes it doesn't even let me take the reward if I do it too fast. But these are all rewards that I got. See, it just did it right there. These are all rewards that I got from either buying a collector's edition or buying a soundtrack to the game or something that I purchased off the Mog Station, which is the online store, or uh, just for playing the game. I mean, veteran rewards are in this game, and that's basically, oh, you've been playing our game for a long time. Well, here's some, here's some extra stuff to say thank you. And there's a lot of things. Usually, it's a mount or a minion. It's not something that's going to really help you in any way, and that's good because otherwise, it would technically be like buying advantages over time, and that's something this game has avoided very well is letting you can't buy any advantages in this game pretty much at all anything that you do want to buy is going to be strictly vanity oh yeah the 50 teleport vouchers i forgot about that reward one of my uh, one of my veteran rewards is 50 free teleports and uh that's for one year if i'm not mistaken that is a great reward to have i'm gonna try and avoid using it as a new player i'm gonna try and avoid teleporting around too much but it's gonna they're gonna get used eventually so don't worry now, one item that I noticed isn't here is actually my, um, I have a Moogle headpiece. Not that, not all that stuff. I have a Moogle headpiece that, uh, increases my EXP gain for the first 10 levels, and it has some stats on it, but I also have the Helm of Light, which is a collector's edition item, which basically does the same thing. It gives me one strength, one mind, and increases EXP earned by 20% for the first, uh, 10 levels or so. And that's a really good item to have. Now, again, that's a collector's edition item. It's not mandatory at all. You can totally survive without it. And to be honest, the first 10 levels is not where you'd wish you'd have that kind of experience boost. It's really <laughs> after, like, in the mid-30s is where you kind of wish you had that kind of power. And uh, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of little ways to get experience boosts. You know, like, um, you can eat food. Food usually gives you, like, a 3% experience boost on enemy kills, which I know 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but every little bit adds up. Trust me on that one. Um, Ethernet shards. I think I missed an Ethernet shard back there. I'll just grab this one, though. This one should be for the Leatherworking Guild. I'll come back and grab that other one another time. So, yeah. You're going to want to try and get all of them on your first go-around of the city. But uh, if you miss a few, it doesn't really matter. I went a really long time without ever finishing it on my other character. Now, this is actually a new, f another feature that the game has, which is basically like, um, which is basically like, how do I describe it? You hire an NPC that can go out and do quests for you. I guess I can't do it yet. I probably need to be like level 10 or something in order to do it. Or maybe I have to finish this quest first to do it. But eventually you'll come back to this spot and you'll be able to hire NPCs that sell items for you on the auction. They can each sell 20 items. You start with two by default. They each also have a uh, 100 inventory spaces and you can equip them with gear and you can and and you can store gill and and elemental shards and whatever. There's a lot of things you can do with these guys. One of my favorite things to do is to level them up and have them go out and uh, and earn me a bunch of money. Again, another quest that I see seems a little bit worth it. It's not that far out of my way. Normal uh, see here's the thing. I hate quests in starting cities usually because they're exactly like this. I won't lie to you guys, I usually hate quests like this. I just hate doing all this running back and forth when you just joined an MMO. Yeah, I guess it, it teaches you about the area and forces you to see a lot of the area. And as somebody who's played the game a lot, you know, I've seen these areas a lot. Like, I'm, I'm not interested in learning about all of these basic functions and things like that. So that's really more on me as a veteran player making a new player, making a new character. That uh, it's really something that's more along the lines of uh, a personal issue. But it does actually really help new players, and that's exactly what this is doing. That quest that I just got went in... Uh, so I, ha I got the, the main story quest, which took me to three different places. On my way to and from those three different places, all I've seen nothing but quests that are asking me to move over and, uh, and try to go to all these different areas to get experience points and gill to start the game with and, and crafting shards in case I'm interested in those kind of things bunch of quests that are asking me to go out and kill stuff in the world that they'll eventually want me to come back and hand it look at the six ground squirrels a bunch of other little enemies somebody jumping around he's the heart of the party six ladybugs uh, and then just going back and then four spongers which all eventually got me to align with my goals which is good that's the way that the quest design should be 
that when you go to that when the main story takes you someplace that the other quests there are beneficial to you to complete whether it be for experience points or other reasons and that's something that the beginning of this game actually does very well now you're about to see something that the beginning of this game does not do very well and it's something that a new player probably doesn't want to see when they've just started playing a brand new mmo I'm going to hand this quest in, and I think that this is the... I, I'm almost sure that this is about to happen. I'm going to skip the cutscene again, hand it in. You'll see that this is red. I'm not a high enough level to do the next main story quest. Now, th that sort of seems good, because now it, now it basically... Okay, well, now I can go do all these other quests, come back and grab it. I'm somebody who very much doesn't like that, and I can imagine being a new player to an MMO. It sucks when you're two story missions into the game... And they're already like, no, 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 you're not a high enough level to do the next one. I can imagine that being extremely frustrating as a as a new player in, 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 in any MMO, not just Final Fantasy XIV. However, now I'm going to show you my kind of methods for leveling, not super fast, but ways that I like to do it. Now, there's a few things that you can make advantage of in the very early game here. But one thing that I'm going to hmm, not highly recommend... Finishing this first quest is the most important thing you'll do. But you'll also notice that these first enemies are all level 1, but I'm a level 2 character. So what I'm actually going to do is, I'm going to move a little bit forward here, and I'm going to kill the level 2 versions of these enemies. Now, obviously these are worth a little bit more experience points, but in uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, if you kill enemies that are equal to or above your level, and you kill them in quick succession, you get what's called a chain bonus. And the chain bonus basically gives you an EXP bonus from kill to kill basis. So that was worth 66 experience points. I have my helmet on, so that's because of the 20% EXP boost. Uh, so now when I kill this enemy, it's going to start a chain. And that chain is going to be listed right under my experience bar. It says chain bonus, 80 seconds remaining. And I also got an extra 20% EXP boost right there. So sticking to enemies that are equal to or above your level, not too far above, because you want to make sure that you'll actually be able to kill them is super beneficial to you as a new player that one was worth 79 i got another bonus five percent experience points and wow it actually looks like there's quite a few uh new players here i gotta say i'm honestly a little surprised to see uh just a bunch of new players in the morning but i guess that's the thing i don't really go out into the world as uh as somebody who's you know been playing the game for as long as i have it's just not something that i usually i guess i usually find myself doing you know I just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, there's a few people out in the lower areas, and, uh, you know, the game has new players on a daily basis, but it's nice to see as a as a high-level player, nice to see some people starting off their adventures here. But it is, it's hard to tell if these are actually new players, or if they're people who just made alternate characters, because I'm on a server where it's very hard to make alternate characters. It's very hard to make new characters or alternate characters, but the way that that guy is playing right over there tells me that he's probably not a new player people who are brand new players don't usually tag multiple enemies at once unless they're super experienced in the mmo genre they that's not something that they usually do or at least not something i'm too familiar with seeing people do so uh it's actually something that i would do if i was playing like archer or lancer right now but as a conjurer yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna bother trying so what I'm doing right here is I'm just killing a bunch of basic enemies. All these quests... Now, okay, one big thing that I'm going to sidetrack for is this event over here, which is called a Fate. These are basically like public quests where you just show up and you just start killing enemies and you'll get experience points. So as you can see in this quest, we see some NPCs killing some uh, killing some raptors over here. I'm just going to come over here and, uh, and help them out. And these are worth a ton of experience points. These you're never going to want to, like skip over after you hit a certain point in the game and at some points in the game you'll find yourself doing nothing but these to level up oh no that npc's dead no no he'll never his family will never know peace I don't, I don't know. yeah so while you know these aren't part of the other quests that i'm doing which they can be there are points where these fate enemies which is what i'll call them uh it's, there's points where they will align with your other goals such as doing actual quests or your hunting logs or things along those lines but Overall, it's just, they're so worth. Every every fate you see is pretty much going to be worth doing. Unless it's like a super low level compared to you. Then it's questionable whether it would be worth it to you or not. One thing that you'll eventually probably end up doing is partying up with a bunch of other people. You, know, you don't have to party to do these at all. 
but at some point you'll probably party up with uh, other people just to share the experience from killing the individual enemies. Like, right now it doesn't matter because there's not too many other people in the area. I'm just killing whatever, and uh, that's it. I don't really have to worry about anything. But at some point you'll want to share that experience with every other player that's in the area, you know? And I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I think I have legacy controls turned on. Uh, to one of the control schemes. I'll be going through some of that stuff in a later part of the Let's Play. Like I said, I'm still kind of like trying to get used to the idea of doing a Let's Play for a game from like a new player perspective when I'm not a new player. It's really impossible for me to have a fully new player perspective. But this does give me the opportunity to offer some advice to newer players, you know? You are below the recommended level for this fate. Oh, it's because I just leveled up. So I just leveled up now and got a new spell. And uh, it goes right on my action bar. So now I'm just going to keep playing. Now that's one thing that I definitely want to change my controls right away. Now see, that was 434 experience points. That's a lot of experience points at the earlier levels. But uh, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go into my character configuration. Yes. And I'm going to change it to standard controls because i am not a huge fan of legacy controls that's something that's personal personable to me and there's a few other things that i could probably change here let me check the other control settings oh yeah yeah we uh we're increasing the camera speed for the analog stick <laughs> we are going to increase that all the way and character turn speed all that stuff and i like the 28 degree angle the uh, default angle you can actually change where your character is in relation to the center of the screen i am not a huge fan of changing that setting i like the default setting for that one so now we're uh so we just finished that we're already level four and as you can see i've barely done anything there's a feature that i haven't even gotten to talk about yet that's great for new players but it's a little bit less useful as you go on and on and on with the game and that's going to be the hunting log uh the hunting log is basically you see how i'm just going around killing monsters for specific quests right here well, the hunting log is basically like every 10 levels, they give you 10 quests to go out and kill like three of one enemy or four of another enemy or something like that. And when you complete all 10 of them, you get a nice big experience points boost. And it's really good for the first, I guess, 20 levels. The first two sets of hunting logs are really good. After that, they kind of fall off. They ask you to travel around. Oh, excuse me, I'm stretching. They ask you to travel around a lot. And by the time you travel around and kill all those things, you probably could have just ground out all that experience on your own. So, I need to kill a couple more ladybugs, I need to kill a couple more ground squirrels, a couple more forest fungars, and then we're going to head back into town. And uh, I should be level 5 through all this, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping. It would, would kind of suck if I wasn't level 5 by the end of all this. I might even be level 5 by the time I kill all the squirrels and whatnot. And then, basically what you're going to be able to do now is you're going to have a bunch of level 5 equipment, you're going to have some you're going to have a decent amount of gill for just the things that you need to get done at the start of the game. Don't worry about spending a whole lot on on gear and whatnot because I'm going to be doing all the kinds of tricks to avoid spending gill on gear while you're leveling up. There are going to be points where it will probably be beneficial to you or you'll get impatient and it'll just be something that you end up doing just to continue on with the game to keep furthering yourself upward. But uh, it's something that you can definitely put off for a while and still be in a pretty good spot. Now, I would like to keep killing level 4s, but I'm pretty sure there are no level 4 ground squirrels. And since I only have one little ladybug left to kill, I'm going to go back and kill those ground squirrels. And then we're going to go back and hand all these quests in. And that'll be your basic level 1 to 5, what you'll want to do to get ready for all the things that you'll want to do in the future. I gotta say, this video is kind of awkward for me. Like I said, I'm a veteran MMO player, and I'm especially a veteran Final Fantasy XIV player. I played it back when it was the crappy version that we called 1.0, and even the improved crappy version of 1.23. And then, of course, I played through A Realm Reborn. I mean, my entire YouTube channel, my entire life has been built around this game. I mean, let's not, let's not joke around. So, it's interesting and odd to me to come back and do it from this angle, you know, with a brand new character, with nobody, you know, power leveling me or carrying me through things so I can get this character out of the way, which is what a lot of veteran players will do. It's not, it's not uncommon for a veteran player to actually make another character, because uh, some of the endgame content you can only do once per week per character, and uh, people want to be able to do it more than once per week, or they want to be able to help their friends or things like that, and while there are systems in the game that'll help you do that, um... Some people prefer not to use them, and some people would prefer to make another character to... Ha and it gives them more to do. It, it enhances their MMO experience. While you can do everything on a single character in this game, you can do everything on a single character. But you will meet some limitations as to what you feel is practical on that character. And that's really 
what I am trying to uh, work on. Now, one thing I really got to work on is using the Ethernet because I just, as much as I encouraged everyone watching to use the Ethernet, if you're a brand new player, I am somebody who almost always forgets to use it. There are very few Ethernet shards that I remember to use. Even as a level 50 character, there are so many times where I'll just run someplace instead of taking an Ethernet there just because I was just like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> now, see, I have this helm to level 10, the one that's giving me the XP bonus. So I have to decide between a leather eye patch, which sells for three gil, and it's it's gear for a class, a, a battle class. I'm not going to be doing many battle classes on this. It's going to be all uh, magic classes. So I'm going to get these Allegan tin pieces, which you can uh, sell to an NPC to get some uh, to get a little bit of extra gil. They gave me three of them, and they're worth 25 gil each. So uh, 75 gil for those. These little amounts of gil really do help at the earlier stages of the game. Trust me, you're going to want to pick up all of these little boosts, especially on your way to 50. Because when you hit 50, you're going to probably feel like you just hit a point where you wish you had millions upon millions of gil. Just because there are so there's so many different things that you will end up having to spend it on. Whether it be you're buying your first item for your relic quest, or you're just trying... To improve your gear just so you can do some of the dungeons you know there's a lot of things that you're gonna feel like you wish you could do now I just got a new pair of boots that I'm gonna equip right away I think I'm also gonna get a pair of gloves from the quest over by the conjurers guild I'm pretty sure I will that's where we're going next anyway but as you can see getting around the city once you've done it once is a very quick experience now also one thing that you will get as a new player that you haven't seen me get once is tutorials popping up on your screen all the time now they're not popping up on my screen because i have them disabled but i highly recommend if you are a new player read them i know that it's annoying because they pop up very frequently but there are <laughs> there are points even as a veteran player where i wished i'd read those because i would have not looked like a fool because they explain some very very basic systems now, one thing I would like to point out, there is going to be a main story quest really early in the game that wants you to have full item level 5 equipment, pretty much. Actually, I don't even know if it's item level 5. Now that I think about it, it might actually want full level 5 uh, equipment. And also, as a class, you get class quests every 5 levels. And then eventually you'll get job quests every 5 levels. But for the first 30 levels... These class quests you get every five levels give you a new weapon. They give you, they let you choose a piece of armor to upgrade. They're very much worth doing. It can get a little tedious going back there every five levels, depending on how quick of a level you leveler you are. But I highly recommend doing it. It is extremely worth it to get all of these quests out of the way. Like right now, I'm using all level one equipment minus the two things that I got, and I also just picked up a pair of uh, gloves and I just equipped. But that next quest that I just uh, accepted from the Conjurer's Guild is going to give me a uh, level 5 weapon. A level 5 weapon and a shield. It's a one-handed weapon with a shield, so it's also good for my defensive capabilities, you know? Now, one, I guess there was a few quests that I glossed over right here, and i uh, sorry for that, but... Again, look, level 5. See? That's why you can't gloss over quests like that. Now, for all I know, this is going to be a pain to go out of my way and do now. For all I know, just because I, I don't know. Uh, this is a level 4 quest. That might be why I glossed it over before. But these early level quests come in major handy. And now I can accept the next main story quest as well. Now, normally on a PlayStation 4 controller, you would use the touchpad. But for some reason, mine's not working. So, uh, okay, that one wants me to go to Central. These both want me to go to the Central Shroud. Where does this one want me to go? This one wants me to go to the entrance to the North Shroud. And this one also wants me to go to the North Shroud. So you know what, we haven't been over by the North Shroud yet, so I guess I'm going to head that way first and take care of some of the quests there. And I also unlocked a new feature called the Hunting Log, which I'll show you when we get over to the North Shroud, which is a different zone. For the North Shroud, I know to go to the Conjurer's Guild, it is the closest teleport, it is right outside the Conjurer's Guild. And as you can see, I have three more letters, I'm sure that, that uh, there's a Moogle headpiece that you can get that pretty much does the same thing as this headpiece that I have on right now. I think that was a pre-order bonus, the Moogle headpiece. I actually don't know where I got the Moogle headpiece from anymore. But, um, yeah, so these are quests. So this actually ends up working out well for me because I didn't accept these quests until I was level 4-ish, but they actually end up going in the places that I need to go anyway. Actually, I didn't even read that quest. <laughs> I should have probably read that quest. Um, hard nut to crack. 
yeah, and then this quest takes me the rest of the way. So, okay, so here we go. Hunting log. I'm going to show you right here. Your logs, you have a lot of logs. Crafting log, gathering log, fishing log, fish guide, challenge log, which is something I can't wait to show you guys because that's a great feature in this game. Uh, the hunting log is basically like 10 kill quests where it's like, oh, kill three of these, kill three of these. And when you complete them all, you unlock the next tier, assuming you also meet the level requirements for the next tier. We also get a giant boost in experience points. And every individual class in this game has its own hunting log that goes pretty much all the way up to level 50. Now, the first few hunting logs, the level like the levels 1 to 10 ones and level 11 to 20 ones are a lot better than they just start falling off after that. Like, there's something that you can do for some bonus EXP, but they're not super influential. Like, right now, I'm going to kill these level 1 enemies. And while that's great, you know, their hunting log is going to give me a nice boost. The boost I'm going to get because these are level 1 enemies is very, very small. Like, you're seeing how little EXP I'm getting on a per-kill basis. And, uh, wow, my, <laughs> my gloves look friggin' ridiculous compared to the rest of my character. But it is nice that I can come to here, North Shroud, get some kills, even just bringing some value back to these super low-level enemies. And also, I'm getting item drops from these enemies. This is where you'll probably want to learn how to use the market board. Because most of the time, these items don't sell very well. But there are some, pretty much like almost every MMO, people kind of forget about the items you get from like mid-tier enemies. And they can sometimes sell for a decent amount. And uh, crafting and gathering also. We're going to be pretty much going through everything I can on this character. And uh, honestly, you know, you'd expect like, why would this guy even want to do this character? Other than the fact that people are asking him to do it on YouTube. Uh, other than the rating, honestly, I kind of want to just, I just kind of like doing leveling. Like in World of Warcraft, I made a character for like every class and I leveled them all. I loved it. I loved seeing how fast I could go through all of the leveling experiences. It's just, I don't know. It's just something that I, I like doing. It's weird though, because even on my main character, there's a lot of things I don't have leveled. And I don't know why I don't feel the urge to level them on there and why I feel more the urge to just level a brand new character. Probably because the benefits for me at least are better, like the being able to do the multiple versions of content per week, um, especially in 2.5, which is a patch coming out in a couple of weeks, really. Uh, today is January 3rd that I'm recording this. Yeah, it comes out in, uh, yeah, it comes out in uh, less than 17 days, actually. Slay Mightlings. Now, again, see, all these quests are basically in the area already. So, even though the game is on rails like other MMOs, it's still got... It still, still serves its purpose. And you still have some choice. Basically, once you get through these opening quests, other than the main story, you're pretty much going to be, you know, not doing any of this stuff anyway. Okay, that fade is over. I was going to go do that fade over there, but it, uh, it ended way too quickly. Looks like there's another fate. Oh, no, 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 that fate's in a much higher level. This is one of those zones where it goes, it becomes a much higher level area very, very quickly. So you got to be careful running around in the North Shroud. There's level 50 enemies in this area, and if you venture too far in one direction, it will get you killed. And honestly, that's another feeling that this game still needs to improve on. You know, as somebody who's, wait, I have a quest to do right here, don't I? Thought I had a quest to do right here. Thought I had to go to the Blessed Butt or something like that. Okay, I go, oh, no, 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 it must be over here anyway. Oh, wait, yeah, try by Earth. Speak with, uh, yeah, 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 I gotta speak with this person over here. And that's one thing that this game definitely still needs to improve on is the dangerous feeling in the world. They say they're working on it with the expansion, but, um, there's not a lot of danger out in this world. I mean, yeah, in the lower levels, you can, you can stray a little bit and end up in an area with enemies that are way higher level than you, but there's very little actual threat, especially once you are max level, there's next to no actual threat out in the open world. There's nothing but minor inconveniences and annoyances, and I, I really hope that come the expansion, which is coming out in spring of 2015, that we will see more dangerous areas, that even as a max level character, you won't just be like, oh, I'm max level, so nothing here is a threat to me, you know? I'm somebody who kind of likes that feeling, and that's just because I grew up with that kind of feeling. Final Fantasy XI was the MMO I played for pretty much my entire childhood, seven years, ever since I was like 12, when I was 12 years old going into college, I was playing the same game the whole time. Think about that, that's the kind of MMO player that I am, I'm the kind of person who wants to play and, and stick around, I want to stick around with a game, I want to invest in a game, but I'm also the kind of person who doesn't like to spend a lot of money on other games and MMOs are really uh, especially even especially subscription based MMOs I'm willing to pay a $15 subscription so I don't end up buying a ton of other games to entertain myself throughout the month 
Um, and that's just the kind of gamer that I am. Not everybody's an MMO gamer. A lot of people want to take the jump into MMOs, but there are just so many uh, barriers that prevent them from doing it, whether they be mental barriers or, or other barriers, you know, like the subscription fee being a big thing. For some people, you know, people with a lot of bills, but, you know, I'm not somebody with a lot of bills to pay, so that's probably another reason why I really uh, am a big MMO player. You know, I do have my own responsibilities and bills to pay. Student loans are a big one. Thank you, college. But, um... If when you're somebody who pays a, you know, you pay an electric bill, you pay a water bill, you pay a mortgage, you pay rent, you pay for car insurance every month, you pay for life insurance. When you have all of these services adding up and digging into your wallet every single month, it's hard to make the, to make the jump to play another subscription-based MMO because it just is. And I totally get that, and I totally respect that from people who... If that's the reason people don't want to pay a subscription, I totally understand that. You know, uh, some people don't want to pay... Some people think that the whole, oh, I don't want to pay a subscription thing is more along the lines of, uh, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid and I don't have a job and I don't want to ask my parents to pay monthly for something. No, honestly, most of the people who don't want to pay a subscription in this day, of, uh, this day and age of MMOs are not people with... Are not, like, kids without credit cards. It's honestly, like full-grown adults that have been playing MMOs since they were kids and you know life circumstances just aren't always in their favor anymore now are there people who don't want to just pay the subscription just because it's like oh why would I pay $15 a month for a game and uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna like it but I know a lot of people who have stopped playing MMOs who are or have to take breaks all the time like oh I can't play this MMO right now you know my bills are all catching up to me that's a that's a legitimate reason it's and it's a respectable reason it's honestly I'm impressed by those people because my entire life I've always put paying for my games ahead of everything. It's just the kind of person I am. I love I love games. That's just the kind of person that I am. And uh, I've always put the money for my games pretty much ahead of almost everything else. Other than like a few like life necessities like paying off my student loans for example. But these are people that are responsible enough to take a step back and be like alright I love the game. I, it'll still be here when I, when my financial situation is handled. I just want to take care of that, and then I'll worry about coming back to the game. So, in case you've been wondering what I've been doing this whole time, I've just been doing quests. So, if you if I ever go off on these like large tangents, it's because I'm literally just going around. I've already spoken to you guys about doing all these quests in the area and how you look at the rewards and see if they really weigh in your favor. I'm going to be skipping all these cutscenes because otherwise we're going to be here forever. Um. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm running around doing these quests, doing my hunting logs. When I come to something else that I feel needs to be discussed, that is when I will go about discussing it. But for the most part, I'm just trying to keep you guys uh, entertained and give you a little bit of background as to why I do what I do with this YouTube channel, with uh, these final, why I'm doing these Final Fantasy XIV Let's Plays, you know, kind of like where the passion lies for me, you know? Because uh, I wouldn't say it's I do a very average thing just playing games <laughs> but it's something that I love doing and it's something that I'm thankful that I get to do for a living and uh, if I can help uh, somebody else try to uh, try to help them with the game in any way shape or form even if they're a brand new player you know new players are what keep the games going you know whether they're coming over from World of Warcraft uh, or you're coming over from any other MMO or you're just jumping into an MMO for the first time giving you a background as to why I love an MMO in a in a starter video to a let's play it just seems it just seems like the right place to kind of talk about that kind of thing you know it's like oh wow he's like dedicated to it and stuff <laughs> like this is like a big deal for him and then of course you get the trolls like lol nerd 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 honestly I other than on the internet I've never heard anyone say call somebody a nerd like that's like something that I feel like like 1990s TV shows put into everyone's head and uh, I've never heard it say that before but at this point I've just been doing quests that's how easy it is that's how that's how fluid it is on your first character just run around do a bunch of quests I haven't even doing main story quests I've been doing side quests and uh, some people on my, on my main character when I live stream or I do anything like that they hate on my main character I have so many uncompleted quests so so many quests that I did not complete. But at this point, I think we're coming to a close on the first part. Uh, I'm going to be moving into some higher level areas in a second here. 
uh, slaying Exali, Doltens, and Lost Wings, and Slow Beaks. But I gotta use the bathroom, and I wanna cut this part short because I'm, I render these parts in full 1080p, and it takes like three hours to do that on a 40 minute clip. I don't mind making long videos, it's just I, I gotta be able to do other things with my computer. Luckily, I'll have a fix to that soon. But one last thing I wanna say, since this is kinda like a brand new Let's Play for new players kind of thing, that whenever you're logging off of the game, I want you to look at the bottom of my screen. You see how there's a little moon next to my experience points bar? That is rested experience points. What that means is when you're AFK or you log out and you're not playing the game, you generate a bonus to your experience points that the next time you play and when you start killing enemies and doing certain things, you'll get more experience points until you reach a certain amount. So logging off in an area that has that little moon it's usually in cities or sanctuaries which are usually uh, surrounded by aetherites out in the open world uh you'll want to log off in those areas it won't matter too much at level 50 unless you're planning on leveling uh crafting classes it works on everything crafting classes battle classes magic classes everything so uh anyway hopefully this is a, a good video hopefully this is a video series that i can continue throughout the year to 2015 i'm really excited to try and do some new things with my youtube channel i've been saying that for years now but everything that i've kind of every venture that i've kind of gone on has ultimately led uh led to just i don't know just things that i'm not very interested in but you know what i love final fantasy i love final fantasy 14 and i feel like this will be a great way for me to share that experience with brand new players and hopefully you guys will enjoy the series as well but anyway guys thank you for watching the video be sure to like favorite subscribe and share for all the latest final fantasy 14 information news guides and apparently now let's plays so anyway, guys thanks for watching this video hi new player john calvo and i'll see you guys next time take care